It is March 22nd, and it's a Thursday. This is the video log that takes $30,000 to a million. We're going to get there, and today is definitely helping. It's a plus $1,000 day, so you'll see in a second. The account is up $1,000 today, which is great. Up to an all-time high, new all-time high. I said last episode, I got to start. I gotta start getting used to saying that and it's true we have another all-time high so that's all great so after I give you I, I show you what contributed to today's gains we're gonna talk about scaling in and out of positions and what I think is required for that hopefully help your trading out a little bit or your investing rather or trading so here we go the account is sitting at a pretty $54,869 right now. As you can see, yesterday, March 20th, we were sitting at 53,808, 806. Now we're up over $1,000 higher at 54,890. Over here, I've already switched this for you so you can see the amount of dollars that each position has gained through the day. We have EXK at $54, Apple at $739. The reason Apple got a huge boost today, it was up like 3 or 4%, is because they got upgraded to a strong buy by some analysts. So, um, <clears throat> because, of their um, because of their content now, they're going to do some streaming and all this kind of complicated stuff. But they're really going into like the digital, you know, content market and their services market is also the services are also pretty good and so anyway the company's been upgraded and a lot of buyers are coming in people are just looking for places to add all their money and this is one of them so it's a huge gain i have 100 shares of apple and this is the gain from them we have the emerging markets 34 dollars uh oh realty income 34 dollars c-span 52 dollars uh, wheat and precious metals at $162, huge gain from them. And that's about it. We had uh, uranium on the negatives in a small way. That's about it. I've also, by the way, placed a trade from Spotify, a spread call trade. So the deal here is that Spotify needs to stay under $146 per share by tomorrow and it's currently sitting at 144 there is some news um, over the overnight so hopefully it does not push the stock up over 146 or I might lose up to $500 here's my cash collateral $500 and if it stays I get to reduce this $90 value to zero and I will have gained a total of $100 for that trade so we'll see if it works out uh, it would be a good gain to have a hundred extra dollars for a day just from that one little options trade. And so next, we're going to talk about scaling in and out of a position. So I do this a lot, and I, I recommend other people do it. But of course, you should you know listen to professionals and not just random people on YouTube. So. Um, I guess don't take my advice. Anyways, so let's take a look at ESK, right? So this is a classic example of what I, of what I do. Um, EXK is a 280 right now, and I've been scaling out of the position. So I was scaling into the position last year when ESK was dropping from. Let's see if we can go to the history and find out. Show more. All right. So I was scaling into the position. I was selling a lot of um, $2.50 puts, which means that I get the premium and the promise to buy EXK at $2.50, and it was all the way down as low as $1.80 per share, and I made some trades down there. But let's see, limit buy, $2.28. Market buy 220, limit buy. So I've been buying, you know, on in small increments over here. Look at this. So I bought at 218, 216, 215, 
So I kept on buying as, as shares go down, 211. Look at this market buy at 189. Look at this limit buy at 181. And then I saw I started um, selling in increments again. So I sold it two, $2 for a profit here of over $100. And then I sold it 209. Right, so I started to scale out after I scaled in. And then again at 217, another sell. And there's uh, now I've turning um, bullish on it again. I'm sorry, this is not bullish. This is just the um, expiration of the put sells on January 3rd. So I was forced to buy $3,000 worth of um, EXK at 2.5 dollars which you know at the time the stock was lower but I held on to that position and I you know at the time I knew there was going to appreciate around that time well I speculated it was going to appreciate at that time so you can see I got a little bit spooked so I started selling here at 246 I sold 200 shares but I kept the rest and you can see I scaled I'm now scaling out of the position you can see I've sold 200 shares here at 258 200 260 200 264 200 shares to 68, 200 shares to 72, 200 shares to 73, and now I've just recently sold 200 shares to 277. It keeps going up, and I have 600 shares more to go to get out of this position. I was expecting a bigger silver bounce, but that's a different story altogether. Now, let's talk about the three things that um, you need in order to do the scaling method. All right? So, number one what you need is a stock that won't go bankrupt so you gotta identify a stock that won't go bankrupt it's got a good business how to identify it well you can um, go to the balance sheets and find out if they're profitable over time Sus you know sustainably profitable did they survive big market downturns um, you know are they are they do they have a ton of debt what's their growth in, in revenue looking like so you can you can be an analyst you can act like an analyst and try to figure all this stuff on your own if you have especially some financial education um, or you can listen to other analysts which works so that's number one make sure that the, the company makes money is profitable and consistently profitable and then after that number two is you got to find a price that you're willing to buy it at. It's different than a price that it's worth. Obviously, it's worth in the market, whatever it's worth. But you can listen to your gut. Just say, all right, I'm willing to, let's say, let's go to Tesla, for example. Sorry for the shaking here. Let's go to uh, Tesla and let's see. I don't have any Tesla, but it's a company that you know a lot of people like. And talk about all the time this is their yearly chart let's look at the five-year chart so let's say you just yourself are willing to say all right I'm going to the most I want to pay for Tesla is three hundred dollars so you would start scaling in here okay so it's 275 right now so you can buy some right now if it keeps going up you buy a little bit more if it keeps going up you buy a little bit more split your Split your scaling at least six or seven times. So if you have a sum, which brings me to number three, by the way, is you got to find a figure of how much money you're willing to lose. You know, especially Tesla, but even other stocks that you're just buying a single stock and not even an index fund, then you want to make sure that the money you're putting aside, let's say you have like $2,000, you're, you're putting it aside and you're willing to lose all of it. In the you know in in the name of um, some stock gains, all right. So figure out how much you're willing to use, lose, split it up into um, six, seven, or even eight pieces, and then use those increments. Sometimes you can go heavier increments. You can do scaling, like do a little bit, like a hundred dollars now, two hundred later, three hundred later, four hundred later. Especially if the stock keeps going down and you have this conviction, right? So let's say if Tesla starts going down. You can buy 265 or however you when you wake up the next day and it's down enough for you to have another increment you can pull the trigger 
So you can buy, let's say, at 260, at 255, 240, and then you keep buying as the stock keeps down, going down. And when it keeps rising, you can uh, just chill. You have enough money invested to where you can make some profit. Um, <clears throat> or you can just, just keep buying up until that $300 mark. But, uh, you know, you could just sit and wait for another dip if the stock trend is down. Now, if it keeps going up, what you're going to do is you buy 275, maybe you buy some at 280, maybe you buy some at 295, and then once it goes to 305, then you just stop because you're not willing to pay more than $300, and then you can just ride that out. And then you got to figure out, you know, all right, this is really overvalued for me, and maybe at 315, you're like, okay, that's enough. You start scaling the position out. You sell at 315, you sell at 320, whatever it is. And if it drops back down below 300, then you can start rebuying again. So you want to figure out basically a price where you think what what the, the stock is worth to you. But you can be a bit more objective. And the way you be objective is you can do the homework yourself and try to value the company yourself, which is kind of like what Warren Buffett does and, and a lot of other traders. Or you can just listen to analysts who have already do this for a living. Right, they'll have some price targets, and you can just take one of their price targets and play around that. Obviously, that those price targets will change as the facts change about the company and news come out and new developments, etc. But it can be a floating target. Um, make sure you don't change it too much, though, because it's gonna drastically switch your strategy and you're gonna fall for some traps. This is where discipline really comes in, and you gotta make sure that. You're disciplined about your decisions and your methods and you try to stick around that, you know, price point that you've set for yourself, whether by your own homework, whether by your own comfort or whether it's by other analysts or a group of analysts that you take an average price of. And so there you go. So that's that's how you find the target and that's how you play around it and you can scale in and out of the investment. Some people like to, you can just scale in and just write it out. But the dangerous part with this is like, you got to figure out a price point where you think a company is now overvalued and you can, uh, you know, start selling call options against it or you just sell it outright because that way you never know when it's in a bubble and you just, you just might set it, set yourself up for a big, big drop. So it's important to start scaling out of a position, even if it's like not at 315, not at 320, but 400, right? So have, you got to have a price target to where you're willing to start putting some money away. Don't um, wait forever, right? No stock is going to start, it's going to appreciate exponentially. Amazon is not going to go to, you know, 3 million per stock. Yeah, some other company is going to come in, it's going to outcompete them, Bezos is going to go out, you know, or die or whatever when he gets old, and new companies are going to come in, the management of Amazon eventually is going to falter, they're not going to grow as fast, they might take over the world, and they're going to plateau, right? So no company is going to go on forever. Look at GE, for example, that company was very strong for many, many years. But now it's taken a turn for the worst, right? It's um, their products are out of favor, whatever it happens to be, debt load, bad management, um, you name it. I, I don't know the exact structural issues of the company. I haven't studied it, but their bottom line is they're in trouble. And they used to be in the Dow, one of the main you know, stocks in the Dow, the only industrial stock in the Dow Industrial Index. And now they're, look at them. They're in big trouble. Their stock's been going down. Let's take a look at GE, what it looks like. So you may have thought that GE was a safe investment, but now, look at the five-year chart. It was $30, and now it's 10 right? And uh, the chart goes further back. And you can see a big deterioration. So no stock is going to go infinitely up forever. So you just got to start scaling down at some point. Let's say you want to leave 50% of it forever, all right? Like, in, in the case of GE, you know, you, you, you keep, keep scaling out. Let's say you bought GE at around $10, average, cost average. 
and then uh, you set yourself a price target of 20 and then you start scaling out when it reaches 20, 22, 23, 25, 26, 28, 29 and then you leave 50% of it there forever, that's fine. You've collected plenty of gains. Reinvest them in some index, reinvest them in some bonds and some dividend payers or whatever. But, or look for another company that you are you have a price target for. So hopefully it's a new company that's profitable and generating revenue, etc. So now you're div more diversified and you have GE. And if it keeps going up, great. And if it goes down, you've already pulled the profits and re-roll them into something else or in bonds and you're collecting interest on that. Right. So you, it's it's a really, really good way to invest. Um, but it minimizes the risk um, and it minimizes the situation where you happen to buy up top of a spike and then it just drops down and doesn't recover forever or um, recovers like five years later. And you've been sitting on five years with the stock that hasn't really had any gains. So and that's it about scaling. I mean, what else do I got to say? Um, by the way, just let me know how your portfolios are doing or if you have any questions or any topics you want me to cover. I've been doing the, this market thing for like mm, 11 years now or more. I've been in the markets and I've been studying a lot. I'm not saying I'm a complete expert or anything like that. But if you want me to uh, cover anything or you have questions about you know, reading balance sheets or where do you find them on the websites, by the way, go to the websites of the companies and they'll have their under investor relations, usually a tab and look under there and you're going to find all their information. Um, and if you don't know how to read it, like just quickly, you can Google all that stuff. You can watch. You, there's plenty of YouTube videos on it as well. There's some good guides on how to read them, what's important. But you got to figure out that you got to know that every analyst is different and looks for different things. And it takes a while for, to get a feel for um, what the balance sheets mean and what it means to you specifically. I mean, I'm still not perfectly, um, you know, haven't exactly got my right mixture of things, of ingredients in a com company that I'm looking for um, that's going to help me with the valuation. And it definitely differs from business to business. So if you're looking at a mining company, their balance sheet's going to look a lot different than, let's say, a retailer. Okay, their debt load's going to be different. Everything's going to be different. So their margins are going to be different. Some industries are much more volatile than others. Some some industries lend themselves to debt a lot more. So you you, you need to know all the stuff before you um, make decisions. you got to be comparing oranges to oranges and not apples to oranges. But there's a lot to it. Just, you know, start now, start with small amounts and just learn as you go is my is my recommendation. But uh, again, if you know, make sure you don't invest with anything that you're not willing to lose. Right. Just keep it just keep it in bonds or something or, or in a savings account that gives you a flat interest rate, like two percent or something like that to know that it's FDIC insured and you're not going to lose all of it. And just put some money aside to play with where um you're comfortable if things go against you and you lose everything. It could happen, especially if you're doing individual stocks. Like if you're doing indexes or, or bonds, you may not lose everything. But if you plan individual stocks where I think the biggest gains can come from, you got to you gotta make sure you mentally prepare yourself for the worst and the best because then you're going to miss out on some gains if you don't know how what the upside looks like. So set your price targets and have fun scaling, all right? Peace out.